Hey, welcome back to Connection Point Studies. We are here, Ron and I are here to help lead you through a series of studies yeah. called The Buried Life. Mm -hmm. This whole series is called The Buried Life. And yeah. it's a really fun series. I, we're doing some really fun things on Sunday mornings. I, you know, we're throwing people out of airplanes <laughs> in the river. Yeah. We're gonna help somebody actually receive some lungs. I don't know whether you knew this. I but, didn't. Uh, didn't it's pretty cool. <laughs> and uh, we have so many cool things planned for this whole series. But what's kind of interesting about this particular passage of scripture as they're studying along mm -hmm. is that it's kind of complicated. And yeah. it can be hard to understand. And what we want you to understand is that this whole series is, is fun. We want you to make, we want you to go as deep or as light as you want to go in this series. And so as you study this, keep that in mind. You don't have to do all the questions that we have. Um, in fact, to kind of get the, the thought of this, uh, The Buried Life is a television program, mm -hmm. and they got the idea from a quote, and you, you actually put the quote in the notes. That's tell right. Me, tell this about is the quote. from the poem called The Buried Life by Matthew Arnold from 1852. It says, but often in the world's most crowded streets, but often in the din of strife, there rises an unspeakable desire after the knowledge of our buried life. A thirst to spend our fire and restless force in tracking out our true original course. I really don't understand that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and we're going to have a lot of that in this series. Uh, as you go through this, you're going to realize, man, there's some tough stuff to deal with here. You might not understand it all. Uh, struggle with it. It's okay. Yeah. But in every one of our studies, we always start with a question that is very light. It's, this is a chance for you, especially if you're a brand new group, group, this is a chance for you to have fun and to get to know each other. And really we want you to take about maybe even 10 or 15 minutes yeah. in this part. Mm -hmm. In fact, if this is all you get done in this study, that's a great start. Uh, so the, the warm up question, well, you can give them the warm up question. Sure, the warm up question is what three things do you want to do before you die? All, everybody has to share these That's things, right? right? Yeah. Three things that you want to do before you die, which is kind of about the buried life and what, what it's like. And then before you come back, we want you to read Romans 6, 1 through 14. Make some observations, and then we put some questions in there for you to think about. They'll go up on your screen, and you can answer and think about those questions. And then we actually want you to answer question two, which is, why does this scripture or this passage start with a question? And we'll come back and talk about all that when we get back. Okay, hopefully this took a, a long period of time for them to discuss. I yep. know they probably had some fun thinking about some things. Uh, well, what's one of the things that you want to do, Ron? Wow, uh, cross-country skiing. Okay. Uh, that's an easy one. I can teach I, you I should do certainly that. do that. <laughs> <laughs> like run around the world once or something? I know you're a I'll, runner. I want to run a marathon. Okay. Uh, I hope to do that this year. Okay, good. Yeah. Oh, those are great things. Hopefully everybody shared those things. And then you dug into the scripture, mm -hmm. which is, is kind of a passionate scripture that talks about a lot of things and the struggles in our life. And we're going to have a lot of good time as we dig into the scripture. Now, right. the scripture starts with a question. Yeah, yeah, it's this very interesting question. He says, what shall we say then? Shall we go on sinning so that grace may increase? Now, it's, it's just kind of an interesting question for Paul to ask, and it's almost like he's, he's anticipating a question that somebody might ask if they were reading his letter. You wish you had the other guy over there asking yeah. or debating yeah. him. He's almost debating somebody in his mind. Well, I'm sure that Paul has debated people in real life like yeah. this, and they said, yeah. Paul, come on, what are you talking about? Yeah. And so if you go back to Romans 5.20, you find Paul says, where sin increased, grace increases all the more. Yeah. And so somebody who might disagree would say, so Paul, what you're saying is that sin is a good thing, right? right? So we ought to, woohoo, let's just sin and we'll have yeah. lots more grace. So, so you have to ask yourself this question. How, why does he start with this question? You know, for me, I'll tell you my perspective, Ron. Mm -hmm. Paul writes a letter to the Romans, and this yeah. is a letter that's a central letter. 
He's writing it to the capital of Rome, which is kind of the center of the world then. And he, ultimately, he believes that the church is going to center. He's a strategist, and he's going to center mm-hmm. the church in Rome. Yeah. He ultimately has a heart to go to Rome. He actually did end up in Rome. As a prisoner. As a prisoner. <laughs> and, <laughs> and so he's writing actually to a group of people he's never, ever met. Right. But the letter itself is kind of a central letter of of how to believe, how to live. And this leads up to the fact that he's talking about how to live right. And that's what this, these three chapters are about. And he's talked to the Gentiles and to the Jews, each of them having a different perspective. And so, and so some of these people, uh, Jewish people, you know, said, well, the way you get people to live right is you give them a bunch of rules. Yeah. And, and Paul says, well, all that rules do is make you feel more guilty. Yeah, and, and it's true, right? Because we mess up more. Because there's more rules, easier to mess up. Yeah, and so, so to that person goes, well, Paul, if you don't give people a bunch of rules, they'll just keep sinning. Yeah. And so is that what you're really saying? Yeah. And uh, so that's where the question comes from. Yeah. And so then we get to kind of this, uh, what I want to know is, well, how did Paul answer the right. question? Right. So and that's what we want you to do. Take a look at this next question that we've put up there, which is really, how does Paul answer the question? And you can see the scripture in verse 2. So take a minute, answer that question, and we'll come, uh, come back. Now, we want them to substitute a phrase in that question, right? Yeah, yeah. It's helpful when you, when you think about when Paul says died, we think of, you know, somebody dropped over dead. They're just gone, right? But in Paul's mind, the, the word death there has this notion of separation. Like you would think a person is dead when their soul leaves their body. So uh, if, you, if you read this with have been separated from sin's power uh, instead of died to sin, right. I think you'll see a different meaning. So we want you to substitute that in there, answer that question, and we'll come back and talk about it. Okay, Ron, I was baptized um, as a, a young man right yeah. before I entered ministry, mm. uh, which is interesting. It was a pretty powerful moment. My wife and I were baptized together. Yeah. We went under the water. We came up, and it represented a new life for us. Mm-hmm. Why do you think he references baptism here, connecting this in that way? Yeah, I, I think, you know, we don't want to misunderstand and put too much into baptism. Baptism is really a, a public symbol of a spiritual reality. Mm. Something happened to you when you came to Christ. And when he says you were baptized, and what he's saying is he's talking about when you came to Christ, you identified with Christ. And and the baptism is a picture of going under the water, like becoming part of his death, coming out of the water, becoming this new life raised Mm -hmm. in, in Christ. And so it's really a spiritual journey of what happened in your heart. Yeah, we, we got baptized in our heart way before we got baptized in Absolutely. our public. So this picture of being baptized means that I, I've, I've, it's like I've latched on to Christ when he yeah. went into the grave and I've come out and the power, his power is to cover my sin and to, to overcome my sin, right? Yeah, and it says, it says because Christ overcame sin. Uh, he's no longer a slave to sin. He yeah. never was, I mean, but, but he was not ruled by sin but our old self was. Yeah. And that's why he says that uh, we should no longer be slaves to right. sin. And what's, what's great to me is this, this whole idea of grace connects us to a relationship with God, which when we're connected in a, such a positive way with a relationship with God, he empowers us to change our life. And that's why he's saying, really, if you're, if you're doing this, sin doesn't abound in your life. It actually changes because of his power in your life. Yeah, so, and, and the interesting thing is in, in Romans 6, uh, I love, I, I look at Paul says, you know, we know, we know this. And so, in fact, the Greek, in Greek, there's two words for know. One is to know by experience, something you experience, and there's the other one, which is know by intuition. Mm-hmm. Uh, so this is one that we know by experience something. So the question is, what is it we should know? Right. So answer that question, and then we'll come back and talk about it.
All right, Ron, what is it that we should know? We should know that anyone who has died, mm -hmm. been separated from this mm -hmm. power, has been freed from sin. And that's, a great, that's a great knowledge. If you didn't know that today, mm -hmm. to understand that God's grace covers my sin, gives me a fresh start, that's a powerful knowledge. Yeah, and, and it, it's important to point out that freed from sin does not mean that you would never make a mistake again and live the rest of your life without sinning. It means that you're freed from this power, this complete domination of sin over your life. Right. It makes it possible for you to live life apart from sin. You might still mm -hmm. struggle with it, but you're freed from it. Now that's really what the rest of these questions talk about here. And the next question we want them to think about here is in this uh, uh, passage, uh, Romans, is it 611 here? Yeah, yeah. Uh, we, we want you to take a look at Romans 611. And, um, and it says that you're supposed to think something. So what is it that you're supposed to think? Answer that and we'll come back to you. What is it, Ron, that they're supposed to think? Well, you might have noticed he says, some translations say count yourself, or mm -hmm. some say reckon yourself. So he's talking about a way you think of things, and he says, think of yourselves as dead to sin. Yeah. Uh, and really, again, it's that idea of separated, uh, not from a particular acts of sin, but from this power that dominates you. So don't feel like, oh, you know, I have to sin. Yeah. Uh, you don't have to. You think of yourself as being separated from that power. Now, Ron, we have a couple more questions that are kind of, we'll call them extra credit questions okay. for them to dig in. And mm -hmm. they can dig in on those on your own. They're on your sheet. They'll be up on your screen at the end. And well, well, well let's do, let's close out this study, even though we didn't get all the way through all these questions. It, hopefully you've had a chance to dig in a little bit deep. And here's my thought, Ron, as we close out. You and I have experienced this where somebody's come to Christ and they, they really had a spiritual experience. And I had this guy that told me, I never knew I sinned so much. You know, he <laughs> thought that accepting Christ would make him sin less. And all of a sudden it revealed in him all the things that were out of line. And what, what it means to, to put this into practice in your life is really actually to let Christ and your relationship to him lead you in a different lifestyle. And for a while, actually, it exposes mm. what things in our life are out of line. And that's the power of the scripture. So take a little bit, study this, and pray together as a group, and we'll see you next week at Connection Point Studies.